I heard about Charlie. You asked too bad him getting shot like that. The way Charlie tells it, you did the shooting. Poor fella. They say it made him a mite loco. Here's your champagne, Mr. Feeney. Uh, and here comes the prettiest little woman in Cheyenne. Sit down, Carrie. I hear you've met Mr. Kendall here and Tom. Yes. Well, it's like old times. Except a thing or two has changed. I got me a new wife. What'd you get back east, Tom? I'm telling you something, Feeney. I had a gun, which a friend of mine didn't figure I was drunk enough or, or maybe sober enough to use. Well, I'm going out and get another one. And the next time I see you, I'm going to be using it. He sure is excitable, ain't he? You figure he's still galling over you, Carrie? What does it matter? What do you think, Kendall? I think that Tom Hart's in a mood for murder. Whether it's because of your wife, Charlie, I don't know. Jack didn't shoot Charlie, Mr. Kendall. I know he didn't because we were together that night. That's true. Must have been a couple of cowboys dropped into Charlie's place and robbed him, gave him lead poison, but it wasn't me. Why does Charlie say it was? That was at the trial, he said it then, too. Of course, my lawyer, he showed where it was dark in Charlie's cafe, and Charlie couldn't rightly tell who was in there that night. Charlie figured it was me because we'd had words the same day. I think I'd better find Tom. <laughs> now, nah, don't you go worrying, Kendall. You cool down. Besides, Tommy ain't no kind of a hand with a gun, and he knows it. If he comes looking for me, we'll take care of him. Which was exactly what I was afraid of. I spent the next hour going from one saloon to the next looking for Tom. I couldn't find him. And so I went back to see the one person who I thought might be able to help. No, he ain't come back here. Took it bad, huh? Yes. Yeah, it's a trouble with that boy. Everything nice and easy with him. Never could figure what he was really thinking. But when he busted loose... Charlie, are you still positive it was Feeney who shot you? Sure I am. Well, Carrie says he was with her that night. She's lying. Why would she lie? Well, don't ask me how come a woman does what she does. I think the one reason that Tom's going after Feeney now is a matter of pride. He doesn't want to back down. He'll use you as an excuse. I don't need any man to fight my war. Do you think there's a chance, even a remote one, that it was dark that night you were shot and perhaps you were mistaken about Feeney? Well, I guess there's a chance, but... Charlie, if I can find Tom, if he knows that, if you'll tell... Shh. I'm out of time. Carrie. Is he here? No. I had to come. I don't want him to get hurt. I wanted to talk with him. Ain't much for you to say, seems to me. I made a mistake. I'm not making another. It was Jack shot to Charlie. I lied for him. Uh -huh. He said if I didn't either hear his boys, it'd get you for good. He said he'd kill me, too. Then why'd you marry him? I had to. That doesn't matter now. We've got to find Tom. Jack sent two of his boys out looking for him. He wants to kill Tom. Why? I guess he knows. He's always known how I feel. And I'm going back to the saloon. You'd better stay here, Carrie. Couldn't find him, huh? No. Well, he's probably sobered up by now. He'll be all right. Yeah, nice fella, Tom. Just a little too hot-headed for his own good, that's all. <laughs> well, I imagine when a man comes home and finds his girl married to another man, it can be a little upsetting. Sure, sure. And then seeing a good friend of his lying paralyzed, shot by the man who married his girl... Likely to make a chap unreasonable. Even though he's wrong, yeah, I see what you mean. Then if if he finds out that the girl's husband forced her to lie, and if he finds out that the, that the girl still loves him, he'd be in quite a state. Yeah, that wouldn't be so good, would it? Hmm. Now, if I were the husband, I'd want to get rid of that fellow, say, a fellow like Tom, because my life wouldn't be safe for one minute. I'd send some men out looking for him with orders to shoot on sight. You got any more ideas along that line? Well, if a man like Tom had a friend, the friend wouldn't want to see Tom uh, bushwhacked, I think is the word. That friend is talking himself into a mite of trouble. <laughs> you think so? Then the friend would make another suggestion. Yeah. The husband is quite obviously a most unpleasant person. And the best thing he could do would be to give his wife a divorce so that she can live a decent life with Tom Hart. I'm back, Feeney. Yeah, I see you are, Tom. Candle, get away from me. I'm giving him a chance to draw, which is more than he did for Charlie. You heard him, Kendall. It's a fair fight. 
I heard. Tom, look out behind you. I thank you, Kendall. Oh, not at all. Those are two of Mr. Feeney's chums. They've been looking for you. Now, Feeney, you were saying something about a fair fight. Now, listen, Tom. Draw. I ain't fighting with you. You ain't got the guts of a lizard. Draw. I told you, I ain't... That son of a gun! I ain't fighting. Well, I ain't. Oh, my. Sounded as though you broke his jaw, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, didn't he? I think Mr. Feeney will be leaving town. I also think he'll want to give Carrie a divorce. Oh? I thought you might be interested. Incidentally, what would you have done if he had drawn on you? I don't know. Never thought about it. He probably would have killed me. <laughs> yes. I think he would. Well, I'll take care of the arrangements here. You better go over to Charlie's now. Carrie's waiting. Waiting? For me? Well, I don't imagine it's for me. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Virginia Gregg, Jack Crucian, and Harry Bartell. Music was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Join us again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentlemen. John Wall speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. Indictment. A formal written charge of crime as the basis for trial of the accused. Indictment. The drama you are about to hear is from New York City and is based on stories of the criminal law with authentic procedures as detailed by Eliezer Lipsky, former assistant district attorney of New York. It is the assistant district attorney who directs criminal investigations, assembles facts and witnesses, fills the case to a just indictment. <laughs> Now, Mary, we come to the coast. Take a new sheet right down at the top post. Mink. Post mink. Yes, Mr. Bonsley. Wait a minute. Bill, for heaven's sake, you're going to take inventory. You're going to listen to the ball game. I can do it, Where are we? Mink coat? Fine. Let's go. Oh, no, no, no. Wait. See if Matt will take this to him all day. Oh, no. They're not going to make him bunt. Oh, no. Bill, I take her. Quiet, Mary. No, wait for it. It's scooped up and throw to first. Mickey, he beats it out. He's safe. Oh, all right. That's the game for us. All we needed was a man on base. Uh, what is it, Barry? I'm going there to say, maybe if you finish the inventory in time, you can make the night game. All right, all right. Oh, Where were we, Mink? Right. right. Very well. Branch natural, a double. Branch mutation, seven. Branch, Mary, uh, see who that is. No showing today, too late inventory. Yes, Mr. Munson. Go ahead, Howard. Branch mutation, seven. Go outside, boy, one. Right. Frank Blue is next with four. Mary, what is she doing out there? Phil, 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 they've got guns. Harold, don't do anything. We're in short. No noise, the hands up, no fuss, no much, no bother. All right. Conference on the mound. Okay, break the ball. Jump it up, Harry. Hit the ball, make it quick. No, no, not the ball, Mister. No, I beg you, no. Wait a minute. What's the end? Please. My partner can't be locked in the vault. 
Hey, his heart, Bart, sick man, weak heart. Like What's the, the inning? What's the score? Top of the ninth, the Yankees are up. It's tied up. Here, uh, uh, mantle bundle, right. but I beg you. Uh, get up and get in the bar. Pass one on, caught just in time. Hard on the outside. Four. Five will get the three. They walk. Two and one. Hey, I said it's enough walk. Please. Compton, that 